I say to you, before this month ends, God will give you your own encounter. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. God of all possibilities. God of all possibilities. The God we serve is a God that can make things happen. I said something in the first service, we live in a world where we'll always need God. God never created you to depend on yourself. He created you to depend on him. There's a supernatural part of God which man can never take that place. No matter the science and technology, there's a part of God that can never be done by man. There's no technology that can provide the amount of air with which all the birds in the world can fly. There's no technology that can provide the amount of water that will determine all the fishes in the world to swim. There's no amount of technology that can provide the earth with which you and I will walk. There's no artificial earth upon which if you take away the earth, a man can make as artificial place for us to work. There's a part that man can create. Man can give a tablet to be healed, man cannot cure. They call it health care, not health cure. Man can care, but man can cure. That's what they call it, health care, not health cure. Man will always need him, so he makes sure there's a part that man can fulfill without him. Man will always need God. Even those who say they don't believe in God, they will always need him. Because God established a part for himself as a source. He made sure that the source which man will always pay. That's why the Bible calls him the omnipotent. Only him is omnipotent. But hear this and hear me well. He asks a question in Jeremiah 32 verse 27. He said, behold, I am the Lord God of all flesh. He said, behold, I am the Lord the God of all flesh. He said, is there anything too hard for God who could make a woman of 90 years to have a baby. She has passed menopause. Papa pause. God who could make a man dead for four days to come out of the grave. No science can explain that. There's no science that can bring a four day old corpse back to life. God who could make sun to stand still, not to move. Or 247. God who could divide water where there was no visible wall, yet the water suspended and people pass on it. Nothing held the water. The Red Sea was not just a mere, it's real. Just imagine the children of Israel had a pass and looking at it. Just imagine you looking at a 20 story building high. Just, you know, it's easy now to look at it. You know, it's as if it wants to collapse on them. It was a high sea. God created it, move away, move away, and they just have a mental picture of how they were moving and looking at the water up, doing like this, doing like this, and then there was no visible cement blocking it. It was not a dam, it was real. Yet it took the same water to swallow the Egyptians. That's how all those who think it will not rise will be swallowed. <laughs> The same water that was able to become a way of escape for Israel became an instrument. That's why he's God. There's no point for argument. He's God by himself. He will make things where there is no way. He's the God of all possibilities. You are God. There's no point for there's no point arguing whether there's God. Long ago, a young man who is born again now, he used to be in the house of a federal house of a seven, what do you call it? Federal house of representatives. We were classmates, and he went to Russia to school. He came back, he said, there's no God. I said, young boy, I was not even born again. I said, you say no God? I was not born again, but I looked at him, I said, excuse me. He said, no God. He said, no, no, there's no God. I said, so, he said, because he began to explain from his elementary science. Not born again, I asked him a very simple question. I said, do you see your soul? 
I wasn't born again. I said, have you ever seen your soul? He said, no. I said, how do you believe you have a soul? I was not born again. I argue. I told him, I said, my friend, quiet. He's not born again today. So the other told him, I said, now you're born again. You don't argue. He said, it's a taste. I said, taste is nonsense. Even it was a taste, when they want to die, they see God. At the point of death, everybody has an encounter with God. No matter the taste, when he wants to die, he will see hell real. At the point of death, everybody sees hell and heaven. At that heaven, at the point of death, if you see a man singing and laughing, he's going there. If you see a man... <laughs> <laughs> if you see your grandfather making like this... <laughs> just know your grandfather where he went to. <laughs> but if you see your grandfather singing church songs, laughing... Just know where it went. The end point is always shows those who went to heaven. You don't need to find out those who went to hell. You know. A lot of us will go there. He said, There's nothing too hard for him. There's no sickness God cannot heal. There's no disease God cannot handle. There's no problem God cannot solve. There's no situation that God cannot handle. Your situation is too small for you. What you call a problem is nothing to God. What you call a mountain is nothing to God. What you call a situation that cannot be handled is nothing. God specializes in doing the impossible. That's why he's God. You are God from beginning to the end. You are God all by yourself. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You are For light out of darkness, you call for light out of darkness. You don't need a man. You don't need a man to be the God you are. Are you a trust? But you have chosen to call me your own. There's no point arguing with somebody where it's gone. From beginning to the end, I still rest for argument. Now listen. Everyone on earth who ever said where is God, not one of them ended well. One day a man who built the Titanic, he said, well, not even God. <laughs> he said this ship 
Nothing can sink it. The day was so dedicated it sank. And it was supposed to be the biggest ship. A young lady in Brazil was going to a party. She got drunk. Very drunk. And her mother looked at her. They were going and said, the Lord go with you. He said, if there's a place for him in the boot. They had accident. All of them died, including her. Then the boot had a crate of egg. Not one egg cracked. She was making a mockery, but she died. And the, the boot, where she said, if there's a place for him in the boot, the whole boot, the egg, one did not crack, but she died. The Beatles. He said Beatles have become more popular than Jesus Christ. The following week, he was shot dead. He don't need any argument to say whether he's God. Anyone who ever says it does not exist, he doesn't need to argue with you. He will let you know he exists. Beginning to the there's no place for you. There's no place for you, man. You are God all by yourself. You are God. You are God. From beginning to the end. There's no place for you. The police name is John Lennon. I was trying to talk. John Lennon. John Lennon said. The Beatles have become more popular than Jesus Christ. He was shot dead. From beginning to the end, there's no place for us. There's no place with him. All things are possible. You are God by yourself. There's no place for argument. Is God by Himself? You don't. You don't need the sensors to know whether it's God. We don't need to vote to know whether he's God. He's God. You don't need public opinion to make him God. He's God. You don't need a philosopher to say he's God. He's God. You don't need a scientific proof to say whether he's God. He's God. You don't need anything. He is God. He's God by himself. To the end. There's no place for our you are God of my Give Jesus a shout of praise. You may be seated. Welcome your neighbor one more time with a high five. I say God is by himself God. Our opinion does not determine whether it's God. He's God. It, in fact, our opinion is irrelevant. It doesn't need your opinion to say it's God. He's God. A breath of his nostrils can kill the biggest witch. The truth about God is there's nothing God cannot do. Everything God can do. But hear this and hear me well. And to say you cannot do something also makes you doubt God. Because the Bible in Philippians 4 it says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. There's no impossible case with God. There's no close case with God. If you go through challenges, see, everywhere, if you say, well, I have a financial challenge, he could bring money from the mouth of a fish. Oh, I have health challenge, he healed the sick. He said, well, my brother died, he raised the dead. He said, oh, you don't know that I've not been able to have a child. He made a 90-year-old woman to become fruitful. He said, but I'm crippled. He made a man who has never walked for 40 years to stand back on his faith. Your case is not closed. There's no impossible case with God. He said, well, you have a terminal case. Terminal means you are still alive. They only give you a time. Lazarus was not terminal. If there's a language for Lazarus case, what will you call it? Because Lazarus case was dead. You know, terminal means they only give you a time that this case you will die. But Lazarus was not terminal. Lazarus was what? Terminated. It was a terminated case. Yet, Jesus brought you back. Tell yourself, my case is not closed. Say like a child of God. 
Say it one more time. One day is too much. He said, but look at me, I'm suffering. Your case is not an issue to God. Glory to God. Anything God says, he means what he says and he says what he means. But here is an area where God can never do the impossible without your faith. In Mark Gospel chapter 10 and verse 27, God's word declares, he said, with men it is impossible, but not with God, for with God all things. How many things? Not some things, all things are possible. And he said in his word in Mark chapter 9 verse 23, he said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. So God can do all things, but you have to believe what God says to commit him to do what he says he will do. There is no impossibility with God, and there's no impossibility with men who believes his word. I come again. There's no impossibility with God, and there's no impossibility with a man who believes the word of God that God has declared. So if I stand to agree with God on his word, there will be no case called impossible in our lives. Impossible only exists in the slabs of a man who does not believe the word of God. He said, with men, it may be impossible. With God, all things are possible. But he said, if you believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. So God can make all things possible if I believe all things are possible. So when two of us agree on the word of God, there's no possibility. So I hear so faith is what it takes to make things possible. Standing on the integrity of God's word. Now listen. Faith is the substance of things hopeful. Evidence of things not seen. This is what faith is. Stand up. Look at this man. For instance, I say to him, I'm going to give you one million naira. Did I give you the one million? Do you believe I can do it? Give me a microphone. I want to come sorry. That's how faith is. Do you believe I can give you one million? Yes, sir. I believe. You believe? Yes, because you believe I have the capacity to give you one million? Yes, sir. Why do you believe when I've not given you the cash? Because do I you know believe? Your capacity. And you know by my capacity I can do it. Yes, sir. Through? Yes. But yet I've not given you the physical cash. Can you go about telling everybody that, look, I know I have one million. If I give you a specific date, for instance, I say, well, by tomorrow I'll give one million. Can you go ahead and begin to negotiate some things based on that one million? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can do it. So you yes, can even negotiate something. Yes, so please supply me something in the evening. Yes, you can do that? Yes, sir. Because you know that that's who God is. God tells you anything, stand on the integrity of his word. Because it's not a man. Whatever God says, he has the capacity, he has the ability to do what he says he will do. That's why he said it's not a man that he should lie. If God says anything in this world, you can go ahead and announce to the world it is done. Because the one who spoke has the power to make it happen. That's where many of us don't believe his word. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is evidential. It has not come, but you don't doubt. I have not given you one million, but you knew that I have the power to give him. That's what faith is. Faith is that you know that God who spoke has the power to make it happen. Irrespective of you not seeing it yet. That's what says the evidence of things. Oh, you have not seen it, but you know that the one who spoke cannot lie. He has every capacity, ability to make it. That's what faith is. Faith is not seeing before you believe. Faith is believing before you see. Seeing to believe is Thomas. Seeing to believe is what? Believing to see is Abraham. And he cannot use Thomas' faith to get Abraham's blessing. Oh, if I get it, then I know God has answered. That is Thomas. If I can see, touch his hands. That is Thomas. 
Abraham believed that what God said it will happen. You can't use Thomas' faith to get Abraham's kind of blessings. No, it doesn't work like that. If you want Abraham's blessings, you must behave like Abraham. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. And so said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe. It is the option. Say, you must believe. He must what? That he is. That's a command here. Read the Bible upward, you won't see it. That he is. That means whatever he says, he is, he is. See, command. For he that cometh to God must believe that. He is God. Permit me to paraphrase it. That he is God who speaks and does what he says. That he is. That he is. Let me put it this way. If you know, he is president. You don't doubt. He is commander. He is, that. he is God. That he is. And that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. Who don't doubt what he says. Who don't begin to analyze what he says. Who don't question what he says. Who stand on the integrity of his word to commit him to perform. God wants you. He that believes is simply receiving the word. Now listen. When we say believe is simply receiving the word. As many are received today, give you power to become what? Mary never had a Bible. Today you have a Bible. The angel came to her, the messenger of the word. You will have a son without a man. You are going to have a son without a man. There was no written Bible. But she received that word. And in Luke chapter 1 verse 45, he said, and blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her. It was told her. She didn't see Bible. She didn't see where it was written. She heard. Now you are seeing the word of God, written black and white, telling you this is what God says. The moment you receive that word, you become what the word says. If it says by stripes, you are healed. You receive that word, sickness in your body, but you say, now by stripes, I am healed. Sickness will go. You receive the word, he himself took my infirmities. Cancer is staring at the face of the man and say, he himself and he received that word he took. Cancer will live. He was made poor that I might be rich. Poverty is staring at your face. And you know you are a covenant practitioner. And poverty is face to face. He said, now God's word said he became poor that I might be rich. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue I condemn it. I receive that word. Even if they say they are guarded against me, it will never prosper. It's not quoting scriptures, it's receiving scriptures. Because Satan quotes scriptures, but he does not receive scriptures. Satan quoted scripture to Jesus Christ, but he does not receive the scriptures. So quoting scripture is not what we mean faith. Faith is receiving scriptures. You can quote scripture without receiving it. Satan quoted scriptures. So don't think that quoting scripture is knowing Bible. It's receiving the blessed is she that what? Believeth. She received. He said, as many as what? Received in this, as many have quoted him. Faith is having confidence in God. Having what? That the one who spoke cannot lie. And God responds only to faith. To what? To faith. And today we respond to your faith. I say we respond to your faith. Yes. Faith is important because God is dependable. God is reliable. God is what? Yes. God is? Yes. You can depend on him. You can rely on him. It's not a man. That is lie. That's my best scripture. God is not a man. That is your lie. Every time you want to doubt, look at this scripture. It's my best scripture. God is not a man. That is your lie. Neither the son of man. They should repent. Had he said, shall he not do it? Had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? What is it that God has said? Relax yourself. God told them, move towards the water. Most would have said, God, it's water. See water. 
The moment, that's how God, when God speaks, it is done. Let me say this way. Anything God says is a finished matter. Your duty is to act in faith. He said, move. See, let's see. He said, move. Moses said, no boat. Because before then, there was no way of water parted. You know, it's easy to talk now. Before Moses, water has never parted. There are some things God wants to do in your life. He will start with you. You don't ask questions. As far as in the Bible, maybe in your family, nobody has ever given a kind of amount he wants you to give. Don't say, hmm, my father, my father, did you give this kind of money? Before Moses, there was nowhere water parted. It was easy for Joshua and Elisha to see water part, but not Moses. Moses was the first. He said, move! And it was easy. Moses said, let's go. The one who spoke cannot lie. So that scripture Moses was said, God cannot lie. He said, let's move. Let's go. As he moved, what I saw them did like, pop. When God said, take a step of faith, do what he has asked you to do. You see God do the impossible. Until you move, you can't be a mover. You have to take steps of what? Faith. Move when God speaks. Don't ask questions. Just move. And see God take the steps. We are to build the cathedral. And God said, go ahead and dig the foundation. Now, the, the foundation of that cathedral was enough to shake people's faith. If you see the pillars. The first man, the last man, take the last man, the whole the last man was on one, one pillar. It was swallowed as if you didn't pour cement. The entire trailer load, the base of one pillar, swallowed it like bridge. He said, excuse me, do you tell her 600 bags are here or how many bags? All are here. He said, yes. Just one to carry one pillar. He said, well, excuse me. Say faith. Say faith. By the time you use your brain to calculate, you may die quick. <laughs> faith does not calculate with human senses. Stands on the integrity of his word. Because if you use your human senses, you may have IBP, high blood pressure. Most of you have high blood pressure because you are not working in. You see, my school fees, my, my, my landlord. BP is lack of faith. Everyone with BP, you lack what? What is giving you pressure? Come now! God said, move, move. Don't ask. God, see how much I have now. What's your business? Have you bought form before you're taking off school fees? Faith is by form, leave school fees. Permit me to put that way. Why are you bothered about school fees when you have not bought a uh, form? Faith is by the form, leave the school fees for him. <laughs> Subtitles of this? Evidence of this? No, so, <laughs> evidence of this. You have not seen it, but you don't doubt. You have not seen school fees, but you're buying. That's good faith. <laughs> but I want to use natural things to explain faith. You don't say, oh, how do I pay my fees? You go and buy form first for the school. Before you talk about school fees. That's faith. That's what? Faith. It's right here. They say they want water to wine. Say faith. He said, go and put water. They say wine, no? Put water. Say faith. They would have said, Jesus, we say wine. That's what I first do. Jesus, here now we say wine, wine. We say wine, wine. Jesus said, go and put water. They didn't ask him question. Mary preached a very powerful message. Whatever it tells you to do, do it. You analyze too much, too much, too many things. That's why many are paralyzed. They analyze. This thing, logically, analytically, and sensitically, <laughs> faith can never be logical to your human senses. It makes no sense when you act with faith. Now, how can God tell you give and it shall be what? It's the idea that's scattered. You are in need, and God is telling you to give. No, it doesn't make sense. I don't, I, tell me how. Who says it? you are in need, and God says what? Does that make sense? You should look for more. The widow of Zarephath said, This is the last food we eat to die. God said, First of all, that's what you eat, want to eat to die. Give it out first. Say faith. He said, This one will eat it and die. He said, Give it out. That's the only way I walk. She would have said, Look, Elijah. Elijah. He said, a man of God. <laughs> so faith. That woman's hand triggered God by faith. 
The moment she released in faith, heavens responded. If you don't walk in faith, God will never respond. Tears don't move God. Crying don't move God. It is faith that moves God. And this is a month of harvest. And a month of harvest, your future will only be created by the seed you sow today in faith. If you can't give in faith what is small now, the big one will never come. Until you step out in faith with a little in your hands, don't expect a bumper harvest of tomorrow. As long as you keep holding that seed with fear, God will never give you the harvest of your future. Start with what is in your hand now in faith, and then your greatness will emerge tomorrow. 1997, I read God's will is prosperity by Gloria Copeland. And my faith rose from that book. And I discovered that it's impossible for you to prosper without operating the covenant. And I got a deep knowledge on kingdom wealth through prophet offering. And as a married man, all that was in the house was 50 naira. Say faith. Yes. Now, how do you give 50 naira? the only offering you have. That's as a married man, I was not single. You know, single man, you can give and carry your toothbrush anywhere you reach, you sleep. You know, you know, when you're a bachelor, that is you can do. Bachelor, you can just put your toothpaste, toothbrush here and then move. Anywhere night reaches you, you put your head, morning you take, continue again. But you can't do that as a married man. So, as a married man, all we had at home was what? At least 50,000. So, you told me 15 naira. That one note. Home man. Not that we had any other money in the bank, no money in the bank, nowhere. There was no bank account. It was home account. <laughs> it was what? <laughs> Say faith. I took the 15 error, envelope it. Hell was open in two hours. Say faith. Because I would have said to my wife, you are there. Say faith. I was working here. I used to earn salary. I'm still working here. I've not retired. So, my salary then was 5,000 naira. I used to be on salary. This means I used to be on salary. My first salary was 1,005. Got to 5,000. The last salary was 15,000. Then one day I earned 5,000. I just took the salary. 5,000. My wife was upstairs. And God said, sow it as a seed. Every time what is in your hand cannot meet your needs, it is a seed. And you have to act by faith. So, I took the 5,000. I didn't tell her. When you want to walk in faith, you don't discuss with people. All these too many analysis is because you're not walking by faith. My wife, come. Uh, God is speaking to me. Faith is gone. That time you want human opinion. Faith does not seek opinion. Faith does not seek human. Every time you consult your wife, husband, it's no longer faith. Just tell yourself you have gone out of faith. You are trying to analyze issues. My wife, what is your opinion? She will definitely have her own opinion, which will be contrary to God's opinion. Because human opinion will never agree with God. He said, my husband, I, it's good, though, but um, you remember our, our son in Canada, his school fees? You know, the other one is in UK. I give, but keep their own school fees. <laughs> at that point, two of you will end at that level. I took the 5,000. Say faith. Now, listen, that now it's easy for you to say, if I die, hey, hey, nobody knew us, though. Nowhere will I get one to them from. You know, you can, now you can say, ah, if you give any amount, they can call me a member. One member can just give to him. No member, not even my family, nobody. Flog everybody in my family, five times I won't come out. <laughs> so, don't think that I say I gave five times. Nowhere will the father come out. You know what? You say, what is a sin? Like today, I, I, I got, I, got, I was telling my face. <laughs> a story was told me. He said, Money. What was the exact statement that you said? He said, Money is very good. It makes you have rest. There are many unrest is poverty. <laughs> Some of you, under anxiety, is, is lack of money. 
That's why you're sleeping and waking up. Your BP is going up. It's poverty. <laughs> now, they, they gave me. He said, we say money is not good. It's a lie. Money is good, though. Money is good. Don't deceive yourself. Money is good. Aye. If anybody tells money is not good, it's a lie. I brought someone as a guest. After service, he was leaving. He said, Papa, thank you. Do you know, this is the first time I've been coming to Paragon that I slept like a baby. You think one is not good? He said, I slept well, no dream. He was not joking. <laughs> <laughs> I came to him in the guest house with his wife. He said, sir, ah, that place is very comfortable. <laughs> Some of the dreams you're having, <laughs> it's no devil. <laughs> it's the environment you're sleeping. <laughs> Do you know when they take light, you dream? Just sleep on that heat, you will dream. <laughs> Any day you sleep on that heat, you will dream. Sleep on that heat, you will dream by force. An old man went for wedding. They kept him under AC. When he woke up, he said, my son, if it's like this, I won't die quick. <laughs> but what did he say? He said, sir. But he says, you know, people enter that plane, they said, how do you pay that for first class? First class and economy, you will reach the same time, but not with the same body. <laughs> you are <like, laughs> like, what? The same time, but not with the same, <laughs> same body. <laughs> One will arrive with pains. <laughs> Will what? <laughs> Two of you will arrive at the same time, but not with the same point. Yes, yeah, so the same time, oh, play will arrive at the same time, but one, when you come down, <laughs> nobody will tell you that you, you enter plane <laughs> because you, you, you just stay like this. <laughs> you want to sleep, they push you. <laughs> I may not carry a baby. <laughs> but then you reach here, eh? it's as if they participated your body. Poverty is you won't be poor in Jesus' name. So I'm not, poverty is a sin. <laughs> he say, you think I'm joking, poverty is a sin. Pastor Charles says it's not sin, it's wickedness. <laughs> poverty is what? It's wickedness. Okay. Have you given anybody money before they don't smile? Check right away. No matter how someone is trying to give him money, with smile. If you think money has no power, there's somebody be angry, be angry, and then bring a bundle. <laughs> the person will laugh. Anyhow, anyhow, the person is depressed. When he bring money, even a widow who is crying, he give her money. She look like, look like this. <laughs> that moment, smile will come on her face. Say, okay, we'll continue after. <laughs> Nobody will be a widow in Jesus' name. I was casting a man. I did everything in the office. He did not laugh. I asked, I said, God is so faithful. He said, yes, sir. <laughs> I said, don't doubt. God is so good. Believe God, this will change. He said, yes, sir. I did everything. For close to 45 minutes, this man was not responding well. I said, God, what is it? God said, give me money. <laughs> All the Bible, I opened every scripture to give him hope. He said, I heard God clearly give him money. Don't bother preaching again. I opened my drawer. That's how poverty is bad. I opened my drawer. I brought out a bundle. As I put it in, he said, <laughs> <laughs> He said, Papa the Papa. <laughs> the man who did not laugh for 45 minutes is laughed. There are some things by too much preaching will not solve. Just bring one bundle. You see the man who is trying to die, he wake up from the dead bed. He said, no. What is a sin? Give your grandmother money. If you're not tight in a wrapper and fold it. <laughs> I said, my picky, you won't die, huh? You're not going to die now. You don't know? There are old women I take care of. One of them played one player. I was touched. He said, you're not going to die, my picky. The two will kill you, make it kill me. And <laughs> you won't kill you, make it kill me. Make it bury me. You're not going to die. When she looked at the money I gave to her, she said, sure. You're not going to die, you. 
<laughs> Money has power. But that's why you must have it. But you can't have it without faith. Without what? Without faith. So if you can't give the small in faith, you can't give much also. Never you hold on to the seed in your hand if you want an harvest tomorrow. Yes, you say, I have little. Start with the little in faith. A widow gave an offering in Mark chapter 12, 41 to 44, called the widow's mind. Many a times, many people don't understand what that woman did. That woman drew the attention of Jesus by her faith. By what? She gave all that she had. When she gave all that she had, faith was the major reason. Many people read that scripture. No, the reason why Jesus should do his attention was faith. It was what? Because she gave everything. Then what was she going to use then? That's where faith comes in. Every time you say the widow's mind, you are simply saying, I'm giving everything I have. Widow's mind is not giving small things. It is giving all that you... Widow's mind is not stingy mind. Many give stingy mind and call it the simple carry offering. No, it's literally like it has a way of spoiling the Bible. They will just come and say, I'm trying to give you my widow's mind. No, that's not widow's mind. That's what? Stingy mind. Widow's mind means everything I have. Look at the Bible so you, don't, you understand the Bible. Mark 12, 41 to 44. And just sat over against the treasury and behold how people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in what? Much. And there came a certain poor widow and she threw into what? Which make a father. And he called unto him his disciples and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you that this poor widow has cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. And for all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her one did cast what? All that she had. All. All. So when you say, I'm giving my widow's mind, what are you saying? All. all. And so what people are calling widow's mind is what? Stingy mind. Even all her living. So she acted in what? Faith. Acted what? Faith. Faith was the reason why Jesus. The only thing that can draw the attention of God towards you is faith. Is what? Not your weeping. Not your emotions. Not your vibration. Not your excitement. Faith. Faith. The proof of faith is revealed when you pursue your sin. God, all possibilities will only make things happen when you obey the instruction by faith. Well, let me use this statement and I close. There's one thing to prove that you believe God when you sow a seed. By what? Faith. And every time you struggle to sow, there's one major problem you have and the problem is called greed. It's called what? Everyone who cannot give has a problem of greed. Greed hurts. Faith gives. Weeping does not move God. Screaming does not move God. Excitement will never move God and can never collect greed. Confession will never collect greed. Only sowing can be the cure for greed. Every greedy person don't like giving. The first sign to show that you're greedy, you struggle to give. And that has been the nature of man. Man has always struggled to give. If your children who are just small, you say, Junior, give your biscuit to your sister. He said, mm. He said, Junior, mm. if you have a child and you take a biscuit from him and you start throwing the rest, don't laugh. Don't ever laugh. Stop him from that moment. You take one biscuit, it packs the hole and throw on the floor. No, no. It started the greedy nature. It's the nature of man. The hoarding nature he has started. From that childhood, stop him. He says, learn to give. Do you know that children wants to take their biscuit, they throw everything out. They say, no! Don't say, this bird does not... Like. No, no, no. That's your own nature is exhibiting. <laughs> Make him have the nature of God. Say, Junior, learn to be a giver. God says he loves givers. Shall always be more. Drop the seed of the word in his heart. He may laugh. He say, no, now nah, give one to her. Don't say, hey, this bird does not like... No, no. Tell him, hey, give to your sister. Next day again, as a bring me, he said, give to your brothers. You're, you're teaching him how to give. 
But when it does like that, you just laugh. <laughs> it's your nature. That nature is your nature. Because natural man hurts. We don't like giving. And greedy nature is our lifestyle. Especially in this part of the world. We want to collect all. Collect. You know, it's our nature. It's your time in office, so got everything you know. You know why you leave office? This family, nobody like you. So, got that. so the man will eat to the fourth generation. Ah, the way they steal money in this part of the world, they steal to the fort. They don't steal one generation, they steal to the fort. You know, you plant seed, harvest to the fort like Abraham. They, they steal to the fort. Abraham gave, Levi was the fourth generation. Levi was blessing Abraham. Abraham was giving so that Levi would be blessed. Yeah, they steal for. <laughs> they steal to the fort what? But give in faith. Give in what? Give in faith. Without faith, you can't give. Don't be emotional. Don't be excited. Make sure you are a giver in faith. Rise to your feet. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Give in faith. Giving is only possible when you do it in faith. Faith is that you know what God says he will do it. You are not doubting how he will. Just imagine me if I was doubting how will God give me the money when he said give me 5,000. If I was analyzed, I wouldn't give. That's why many of us can't act in faith. Just imagine, okay, then nobody knew me. Nobody was there. So if I began to analyze, say, ah, God, my wife has said we should go to market. How are you going to do now? But you know, my wife has told me. That's why many of us can't come out of where we are to where we ought to be. I, if I begin to analyze, I have every reason to say, God, you know, my wife just told me now she'll go to market. They, those things will always talk at. The voices will always come. But you have to walk by faith. Faith is that I know God you said so. Therefore, I don't doubt what you say. Your word commits your integrity. I'm acting based on what you have said. So you take his word and tell him, Lord, I'm not doubting what you say here. This is your word. And if it's your word, your words bind you. I stand on the integrity of your word. You're not a man that you should lie. So I'm acting based on what you say. And then leave it to him. That's not your own business. How he will do it is not your own business. You know with expectation that he will bring it back to you. You act in faith. Even now I'm still acting in because without faith, you can't sow. If you sow once, you will not sow the second time. Faith is a continuous process. Giving is impossible without faith. Forget it. If, do you know, on Sunday, do you not know act by faith? Okay, how do I know how I get the money to build a house? Say faith. Say faith. Without faith, you can't please God. How can you have salary? And say, give me. It's ah, easy now to talk. Oh. 90, <laughs> to give your salary. When your wife has said she will go to... Ah. You know, now I can give anything. You can say, okay, anyhow. By the time three members say, make phone call. <laughs> if you don't have faith, you will not act. You will be calculating the analysis. Um, um, when, when condition balance. And it will never be balanced. I can tell you, it will never be, can never be balanced. You have to step up. Do that which God says you should do. Then you commit him to do the impossible. Heaven was open when I gave the 5,000. I've shared his testimony over and over. A woman walked in and gave me 25,000 with full stuff. But if I never gave the 5,000, my harvest wouldn't have come. So that seed you're holding in your hands with that releasing is the reason the harvest has not come. Every harvest is tied to a seed you release. With that release of seed, there will be no release of harvest. When you hold this seed, you also hold on your harvest. God will never give you a harvest over a seed you have not released. And if the harvest you look at is not enough, then change your seed. If I look at my harvest, it's not okay. Then I change my what? Seed. I change my seed. Then I change my seed. You pray to God. Lord, show me the seed that you've already given to me. Lord, now that I've given, I pray that that seed I've given will produce my harvest. But for those who have not given, tell him to show you the seed. Everybody has a seed to give. Lord, show me the seed that I already have. Already what? 
God will not tell you what you don't have. He will show you what you already have. God will never ask you. He never asked for Abraham to bring a son until he gave him an Isaac. Anytime God says, give me this, he didn't tell me to give a salary when they have not paid me. When they paid me, they give me my salary. Anytime he says give, he already gives you a seed. God will never ask you to give a seed you don't have. When some people say, God told me to give the money I'm expecting, it's a lie. God has never asked for a seed that you don't have. Don't make such promises before you get yourself into trouble. God will always tell you to give a seed that you already have. It does not use what you don't have to move you to the next level. It uses what is available to move you to the next. It's you, the ability to have faith to exercise moves you out of where you, out of where you ought to be. Lord, show me the seed that I already have that will bring my next harvest. Go ahead, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. You decide and take action to sow, regardless of situation and circumstances. That is faith. Let me say this, that God dropping me. He said, as long as a man decides to keep begging, and a man decides that somebody should help him, he will never sow, and he will never come out of poverty. I could read. As long as you believe that somebody has to help you somewhere, as long as you believe that you have to beg, you will never come out of poverty. You come to a point where you shut that door in your mind for somebody to help you and somebody to give you. You come out of poverty. No man giving to you can make you prosper. It is your own giving that can make you... No man assistance can make you prosper. It is your giving that can make you prosper. Now, The Prophetic with David Ibiomi. Amen. Just the way you are laughing, may you laugh to end this month. Amen. May the laughter of this land be prophetic. Amen. End this month laughing in the name of Jesus. Amen. End this month laughing in the name of Jesus. Amen. End this month laughing in the name of Jesus. Amen. I speak with authority and the mud with laughter in the name of Jesus it is well with you in Jesus mighty name the world is full of unrest money has failed human intellect is not working you need Jesus in him you will find peace and rest Jesus said Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Those who are not going to say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that you died and rose from the dead to save me. Right now with my mouth, I declare you Lord over my life. Thank you, Father, for saving me. In Jesus' name, To watch our live services, visit our website at org. If you want us to pray or counsel you, please call. You can also stay connected through any of these our social media accounts. This message is brought to you by Salvation Ministries, home of success.